and welcome to my YouTube video. Today I'm going to be painting this lovely Rottweiler, but before I show you the time-lapse video, I just wanted to discuss a couple of, Im of important points about this painting. So I've talked um, about using black in my other videos. Um, if you watch some of them, you'll see that there are actually some animals that I've just painted black animals and I've talked about it before, but I just wanted to go over it again, seeing as this is a black dog. So many people, they just, they don't use black at all. They'll mix like a number of different colours together to try and make a rich black. So I don't do that. I do use black. Um, I don't see an issue with using black. But I just wanted to say that there is a caveat to that. You should never use black straight from the tube. You need to add colour to your black depending upon what the temperature is of the thing that you're looking at. So I wanted to try and illustrate what I'm saying uh, with the use of this sphere diagram. So I did this little sketch in Procreate and I wanted to use it to try and explain to you what happens when the, the light hits uh, an object. So, so what happens is basically you get a very dark area. These are your deepest shadows and they will be warm. You'll, you'll then get your shadow, which will be cool. And then you'll transition into the area where the light begins to hit, hit your object. And these will be warmer. You'll then get your, your highlights, which will be very warm. And then you'll get your very, very whitest area. So black, it behaves no differently to this. So you've got to add colour into it. And if you don't, what will happen is you'll get a very flat painting. And also, you've got to remember, as your, your object lightens, you don't just want to be adding white to your black. If you add white, you have to add chroma. So like red, yellow or blue. If you don't, your painting will go chalky. So it, that is very important when you're dealing with black. So I also wanted to talk briefly about the directional rhythm of this painting. So if you view your painting as a set of shapes, what will happen is it will help you make good decisions about what to do to balance your pictures. So for example, here I've balanced the top right area with the bottom left area. So because the energy of this painting is running from the bottom right to the top left, I've also consciously exaggerated this with my, with my brush strokes in the neck. Um, so this, this exaggeration is kind of helping to give the painting that sense of rhythm which you can see. So I think now we should have a, a look at the time lapse video and I'll just give you a quick rundown about me actually painting this picture. So I always, uh, I always work over usually four sittings and I just want to say at this point that this painting is on paper. Um, so my method um, for, for painting is a little bit different on paper than it is to canvas. So the great thing about painting on canvas is that it can always be rescued. It doesn't matter how bad it gets or what you do to it. You can just paint over it. And, and to be honest, if it's really dire, you can just reprime the canvas and start again. But you can't do that on paper. Not at all. So I, I should probably also say that this is just regular 280 TSM all-purpose paper. Um, it's not oil painting paper. So with this sort of paper, you have to start light and get dark. But the really great thing about painting on this sort of paper is that because it doesn't allow you to make mistakes, it makes you think about every single brush stroke that you lay down. Because if you go in too dark to start with, you can't you can't take it up. You just you you've just ruined it and basically it'll have to go in the bin. So the good thing about it is, is it makes you think very hard about 
everything that you do. And it, I, th- I think in a way it kind of makes you a bit more accurate first time round. But you have to go in lightly, lightly. You can't just go straight in troweling it on. So I always start with a wash of raw sienna and turpentine as this will help warm up your lightest areas and, and it will give you a much better base than if you just kept your paper white and tried to add chroma to your white paint. It sort of gives you a head start, so I always do this. So then on my first layer, I'll just start off defining my shapes, blocking them in with very thin paint and turpentine. Um, I'm just trying to work my way up to what I think I'm seeing. And you've got to remember to work on your painting as a whole um, because that's the only way that you'll really be able to judge how accurate you are as you progress through the layers. So this is a very, very quick layer. You're, you're probably looking at no more than about 20 minutes maximum for this layer. On my second layer, I'm concentrating a bit more on trying to get my temperatures and values correct. I'm still using very thin paint mixed with turps. So you might find it useful to have a, a reference picture next to your actual painting um, the same size that you're actually painting because you'll find this actually very useful when you stand back to be able to compare them side by side. So if you're able to print it out or if you've got an iPad or something like that that you can have it a bit larger, that's always very, very helpful. I find that this second layer doesn't really take me any more than about 20 minutes. So the third layer, that is where I do all my work really. So this layer will probably take me about two hours. Um, I'm not u- I'm, I'm using much thicker paint um, this time and I'm also mixing in with it a bit of linseed oil, not too much because you don't want to lose control of your painting. Although I have to say that paper is much more forgiving than canvas. So if you do put a bit too much in it, you'll probably find that the paper will absorb um, absorb it. So it, it won't be too much of a disaster. Hopefully you should have a much better guess at your tonal values and temperatures now um, as, you've, as you've been bringing them up gradually. So remember to keep standing back and viewing your painting alongside with your reference photo um, side by side. Um, I usually find that I try to stand back every half an hour or so, although I must confess sometimes I do forget, but you should really try to get into the habit of doing it because it will really help you. So my final layer is really my tweaking layer. So I just correct any odd things that may be off. And um, sometimes I don't even need this fourth layer because I've done it all in the third one. But generally, if I'm tweaking, it probably takes me no more than about 20 minutes. I hope you have enjoyed my video today. Um, I do try and post every week. So if you enjoy watching them, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you for the next one.